si vous voulez avoir la preuve qu'on peut oublier même les quatre années de guerre, entrez au chien qui parle, chaque épatant c'est le seul club de nuit de Paris où vous pouvez être sûr du résultat. Entrez, mesdames et messieurs, entrez, entrez, entrez. Pas Everybody speak the English here. Le chien qui parle is the only night club in Paris, the city of Paris. Where in 1918 you can forget all the of war. Contre, monsieur, This is the real dugout. Ah, oh, duh, they're having knobs on. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord, I say, look here. I say, don't do that, old chap. I've only just come down from the line and my nerves aren't as strong as they used to be. What? Qu'est-ce que ça peut vous faire? C'est ma poule, quoi? Foutez-moi la paix! Yes, that's all it is. Well, you just arrived? About an hour ago. How long have you got? Ah, oh, ten days. 240 hours of life. Uh, oh, well, well, ladies, here's a furnished heart to let for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Hey, don't worry, Mr. Capitaine. You will find plenty to take it for a week. <laughs> oh, yes. yes oh, very nice. Very nice. get sentimental over this rocky war. I do not understand you, monsieur. It's bad enough without singing about it. 
but the music gives you the power, the courage to face the enemy, to conquer. The songs about war that make war possible. If they told the truth about it, what a, what a filthy thing it is instead of glorifying it, nobody would ever start one. That is not the way I feel. You would... Oh, come on, calamity. Don't spoil the party. Here's to our most dangerous enemies. They're always with us. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping bed. <laughs> Don't forget your promise. Go straight home. What else can I do? You left us very suddenly, mademoiselle. Wasn't the British Army good enough company for you? That was because of you. Oh, that. I shouldn't have talked like that to a pretty girl like you. You know you're perfectly adorable when you're angry. If, uh, if you will invite me to come up there, I'll make you forgive me in half a jiffy. May I come up? You are afraid to come down here because you know you'll forgive me. Would I? You don't dare. You dared me to come down here? Now make me forgive you. Well, there are, there are six rules for making a girl forgive you. The first rule is, sit down beside her. Oh, very well. And the second rule is, to take her hand in yours. You were very nice to me tonight. Well, look here, I'm, I'm awfully sorry for what I said. But those girls and the whole atmosphere of that place. Oh, those girls have their place. They serve their country, monsieur. They laugh and sing and love so that their men will get the war. All right. You help me to forget the war. I laugh and sing that that will help you forget. <laughs> Camera. Oh, but, but what do you know about the war anyway? I know a lot about the war. My brother and father gave their lives for France. Say you forgive me. I couldn't really be cross with a soldier. Yeah, cheer up. I'll sing the song myself. Uh, how's it go? <laughs> I can't sing the damn thing. And now, look here. If I call you tomorrow, will you come and have lunch with me? Oh! I see you're getting gone. You will not. I do.
wake up, my dear. The English officer is here to see you. What? The English officer is here to see you. Oh, Flurry. Quick, quick. Tell him I will be there in one moment. I have, but, but why so excited? Three days ago, you said you hated him. Oh, that was three years ago. You mean three days ago. You're losing your head. Oh, quick, my jacket. Oh, I am so happy. I'm in love for the first time in my life. I know these English officers. They come to Paris for a few days and then they go away. Where is it? What did but you, you are an English woman, Flory. And you stay here. It's different with me. Paris has always been my home. But him, what I said was right. And I say you are not. If he goes away, he will come back again to me. Oh. No, how is my sweetheart this morning? Oh, I feel... Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel this morning, my David? I feel... Like that. <laughs> Tell me, what were you and Florence arguing about? She said such horrid things about you, soldiers. She said you love for a while, and then you go away and forget. I have to go back, Lola. We all have to go back. But soon, soon there'll be peace and we'll, we'll have each other always. Mm -hmm. Mon Paul, you have to go back to that hell. Not hell. With the memory of an angel to keep you company. Foolish one. I am no angel. Just a girl. And a good cook. Lola, do you realize you know nothing at all about me? I just know you are my David. When we're married, you, you won't have to cook. Mary? Mary? Well, dear, I, I thought you might. Oh. Oh, you thought I might. Then you will? Oh, my dear. Oh, darling. Now, now, listen, darling. I have only two more days of leave left. We'll have to hurry. How soon could you be ready? Oh, too sweet. As quickly as... Now listen, I'll... I'll make all arrangements, and in an hour I'll be back for you. Then it is true. The truest word you ever heard. In an hour you'll be my wife. Yes, David. Now listen, darling, we'll... We'll get a car and we'll drive through the woods. Yes. And we'll have our wedding breakfast at that little... That little cafe at Fontaine Yes. Will you hurry down? Oh, no, Glory! Glory! Trouble? Oh, worse than trouble. In one hour we marry. Could you direct me to the English church? Oh, no. English? Uh, I comprends pas, monsieur. I bet you I can make you understand the, uh, the church. Oh, we've got to have a little accent, but I guarantee you, he knows all the languages. 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 He Tell me the way to the English church, sir. Church? 
no time for church. Everyone has to turn for line. Oh, but that doesn't count with me, sir. I've got a week's leave. As a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm going to be married. Oh, I see. Well, I'm awfully sorry, old man. All leave's been cancelled. Everyone has to return immediately. But, sir, my, my fiancé is waiting for me. No use arguing. That's the order. Oh, well, can't I... Can't I have one more day? You can't have one more minute. Everyone has to return to line. I want you all to report to the RTO, the guard and all. Come along. gone to look for him. It's not so easy to find an officer in Paris. Oh, if anything has happened to my David, it will kill me. Don't, my dear. In these days, we've got to take the blows the good God sends. Do you know something? What is it? Lola, I know nothing. Un capitaine anglais à la gare du Nord m'a laissé ceci pour vous. What does he say? He say, wait for me. And I will wait. Correct, sir. Keep a sharp lookout. I don't like this stillness. Very good, sir. Doctor, if he does remember me, he'll remember his business. And his part in the help of the construction company, you know. Yes, and um, if he remembers his pre-war life, it will be a step to his complete recovery. Uh, 
Hello, David. Hello, Charles. What brings you here? I've come to fetch you home. Well, how's everything? The war doubled our output. Now it's over, the country's got to build. We should be busier than ever. The war. They're always talking about the war. Oh, don't worry about that. You're going home fit. If you can't remember the war, so much the better for you, and I hope for your sake. You never will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. And thanks for all your kindness. I'm just going to say goodbye to the staff. All right. So, Doctor? He recognized you at once. He remembers all about the business. I should say that he would take up his life where he left it at the beginning of the war and that all that has happened during those four years would probably seem an absolute blank to him. Goodbye. Let's see, Charles, this is, the, uh, this is the fifth annual balance sheet since the war. Yes, and we've shown an increase every year. To improve on these figures, we should have to extend shop number two. Well, we'll have to do that anyway to carry out that old leasing contract. What's the good of it all, Charles? I get no kick out of things. I have everything a man could ask for. A big business, money, a beautiful home. And a beautiful wife, David. Rather late, aren't you? I'm sorry. But I've so much to do that I'll never catch up with it. Well, let's go into dinner. I'm not dining at home. But I'll take a cocktail with you. Thanks. Yes, sir. You know, I hardly ever see you these days. My dear, we had a good look at each other at breakfast, didn't we? No, seriously, we... I, I never get a chance to talk to you. Oh, David, you're so old-fashioned. It's sweet of you to want to chat with me, but the fact is I've been so busy. It was that concert I got up, and Lady made it bizarre, and now this charity ball. My dear, you know what I mean. We're leading entirely separate lives. Now, David, don't be melodramatic. Besides, they're all good works. And I have Delores to dance at my charity ball. She's the sweetest thing that ever came from Paris. You'll love her. Cheer up. I know. You go to the theatre and see Delores. There's a box there in my name. And I'll join you after my meeting. But that's the way. Darling, I must fly. You walk after my meeting. Dinner is served.
She has great charm. She certainly has. Fancy dancing with a heart like that. I'll go and have a cigarette. Oh, stay and see Della Reese's other number. Will you take this note to Madame Delarise, please? I'll wait here for the answer. It's very urgent. Yes, dear. 
No, the pink one. I had Sir Vincent Harcourt at the theatre tonight to see you after you had gone through the strain of the performance. But you ran away. But I didn't ask you to bring him. I don't care for his opinion. Well, you paid 25 guineas for it. Yes, and I'm a hundred guineas better off for not hearing you. Garvey, I have great news for you. Yes, my David is coming. Your David? Yes. When? Tonight, any moment, perhaps. Now, my child, you must not get so terribly excited. I'm not... E no one could. Why, well, think. At any moment, the door may fly open and I shall be in his arms. Let me feel your pulse. What a man. You talk of nothing but your miserable profession. Now, do you use some common sense, Lola. When one collapses as you did... But use some common sense yourself, Garvey. When a woman waits for years for the man she loves, and suddenly he comes back again, is it not too much? My dear... I'm going to talk to you very, very seriously. Nature has hoisted the danger signal. You can't afford to go on like this. You must give up your work. But I can't, Garvey. I don't want to. Then, my dear, it is my duty to warn you that the strain might be too much. What do you mean? I mean that I can't let you dance again. Oh, but I must. I must, Garvey. I can't give it up. My child, if you dance even once more, you're taking a risk, a tremendous risk. I once told you that someday you might have to give up the stage. Well, that day has come, and sooner than I expected. I am going to die. I won't say that. If you will live in the country somewhere quietly, you promise me that? It all depends upon my David's plan. Oh, you'll do whatever you like with David as you do with all of us. But you must cancel your professional engagement. Don't tell my David. I understand. Good night, Lola. Good night, Garvey. Now, now, come. There's nothing to cry about. I thought I would never see you again. No. Now you must be sensible, dear. If you keep your head hidden, I can't see what you look like. And I want to look at you. My darling, what happened to you? I thought you were dead. Or perhaps you didn't love me after all. 
when they cancelled my leave so suddenly and sent me away, my one thought was of you. At the start of the big attack, I was badly wounded. And months after, when I recovered, my memory had gone. Oh. Everything was a complete blank. The war and you. Oh. Oh. When I saw you tonight on the stage, you were a stranger to me. Until I heard that song, then it all came back to me. And your love for me, that has come back too, David. Oh. Tell me, have I changed? Mm. Older, eh? Older and so serious. There's a far greater change in you. The little Lola I knew has grown into a beautiful woman and a famous one. Oh, David, it seems a lifetime since I waited in my little room. Then your note came. You were gone. And I cried all day and all night. And the next day, too, I cried all day. But that's all past. Let's not think about it. Don't you want me to tell you? Of course I do, but it's... It's your great success. I can't get used to it. My success? That means nothing. There is something... Something else. Really wonderful. But Lola... please. I always say to myself, he must be a real Englishman like his father. Sometimes I come home tired and miserable, but I look into his eyes and see you there. You want him, David? Your son? Want him? It's been the one great dream of my life. Well, now you're happy. You can smile. David, why don't you smile? Oh, now you are my old David of Paris. Oh, those divine days. They were dream days. 
Do you remember the day we had lunch at Saint-Germain? Mm -hmm. And that night in the gardens at Versailles? Mm -hmm. and, and the day I tried to talk French and you laughed so, because I kept calling the coachman a pig. <laughs> and our days in London will be just as wonderful. Listen. In Paris we were to be married. And now we can be married. Married? Oh, I know what you're thinking. You don't want to be the husband of Delores the dancer. Foolish one. After we're married, I'll give up the stage. I promise I will. No, it isn't that. It's that I... Uh, I... Is it that you don't love me anymore, David? No, it's not that, Lola. It's... What? I'm already married. What's happened? Christoph, I want to talk to you. Oh? I'm sorry, but I can't put it off. Well, if you can't, you can't. What is it? You know it's been a source of great unhappiness to me. That you don't want children. Surely there's no need to discuss that again. I'm afraid there is. A son is the one thing in life that I want. Well, we've spoken of this so often. Is it necessary? Lester, I want to adopt a boy. Adopt a boy? Do you mean that seriously? Very seriously. I should not dream of such a thing. Besides, what do you know of the boy's parents? Well, they might be anything. He might even be the son of a criminal. I can set your mind at rest as to his parentage. Well, I'm not in the least interested in the boy. Perhaps you will be when I tell you that he's my own son. Your son? Oh, David, how could you? How could you? Now, don't misunderstand. This all happened long ago, long before I met you was in Paris during the war, just before I was wounded. I see. And now she's in London. And you saw her and conveniently remembered her. It was the shock of seeing her again that brought back my memory. You see, we... we loved each other. Very dearly. Very well, David. Whatever you decide to do, I will never agree to divorce you. I'm not going to ask for pity from my friends. It still remains for us to settle the boy's future. That remains for you to settle. I will have nothing to do with it. Please don't decide too hastily. I'm trying to show you every consideration in consulting you. You pride yourself on being a liberal-minded woman. I beg you to be big enough to help me. I will not have the boy in this house. Just a wife. My answer is no, a thousand times no. Very well. If I can't have my boy in this house, I'll have him in another. David, what are you going to do?
Delarice, to see you, ma'am. Oh, it's about the final arrangements for the ball tonight. Say that I will be down immediately, ma'am. Very good, ma'am. Well, Delarice, how charming of you to come. Why won't you sit down? My dear, you look terribly worried. Don't tell me you're going to disappoint me tonight. Why, the whole success of the ball depends on you. It is not that, madame. Then perhaps it's something I can do. I would like to help you. You will. Anything I can possibly do. It is something that concerns you. It's about your husband's son. Oh? And what are you talking about? I came here today to ask you to take him into your home. Why, how does this concern you? What do you know about my husband's son? I am his mother. You? Impossible. And you have the insolence to come here and tell me that? Madam, I beg you. Please, I'd rather not discuss it. Listen to me. I entreat you. Think what you like of me. That doesn't matter. Think only of your husband and his son's future. Won't you try to understand? I understand perfectly. It doesn't suit the great Delarice to have a big boy tacked on to her. Madame, the artist is dead. It's the mother who pleads with you now, for the sake of her son's happiness. I won't discuss it. The whole thing is revolting to me. But, Madame, what right have you to come here? It was you who asked me to come this morning. Very well. Now I ask you to go. But you must listen to me. It was in Paris. It was the war. We were to have been married. Then suddenly he was recalled. He asked me to wait for him, and I waited. Then I gave up all hope. I thought he'd been killed. Those years of pain melted away when I saw him again last night. At first, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought I had seen a ghost. Then he came to see me and told me of, of you. And I realized how hopeless everything is. But the boy will meet his father. I come here to beg you to take something I'd give my life to keep. You rang, madam? I've done all I could. Mason, show the lady out. Esther told me of your visit. I'm terribly sorry. Why did you go? Because I thought it might be easier for a woman to make her understand. Lola, dear, I know what touch you've been through. I've been through it too. And it's brought me to a decision. It's Esther's attitude, her lack of... her lack of human feeling has decided me to do what I know is right. We'll bring up the boy together and take the consequences. David, love is a great thing. I do not care for anything. Oh, it's good to see you again, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Did you have a nice walk in the park? Yes. <laughs> well, take off your coat and give it to Florence. <laughs> Don't be afraid, darling. Go and kiss Daddy. There. Well, old man, what have you got to say to me? It's my birthday tomorrow. Thank you, is it? Yes. 
Well, we'll have a great time together. I would like a lot of nice presents. Did you bring me one? Of course. We'll go out, and you shall choose just whatever you like. I like the thing with the saw in the shop window. It's yours. Mom says that was awful, awful, awful lot of money. Well, you shall have it, Rose. Tell me, what is it? A high tower. What is it? The Eiffel Tower, you mean. I see. Well, well what do you do? Do you, um, do you wind it up? No, you build it up. That's the fun. Mm, so, so building is fun for you, eh? Rather. That's my work. I'm an engineer. Perhaps Davy will be an engineer like his father, huh? Yes. And we'll begin tonight. We'll leave London together. But David, where do we go? To Paris. Paris? Look here, have you, have you hurry? I think we can catch the night first. Oh, I am ready this moment. I'll go just as I am. Now, you can't address the pet, but I'll go and get my things. Oh, David, you'll have those wonderful days again, just as before. Oh, my sweetheart, don't lose your head. You hit the train, I will not lose. Hurry, hurry, David. I shan't train until I'm in the train. Now, Johnny, I shan't have time to come up. Will you be ready to jump in the car just as soon as I get there? Yes. I shall be waiting on the doorstep with Davy. Run, Davy. Run. Flory, could we go to Paris tonight? Flory, could we go to Paris tonight? I need to. No, no. You'll stay here and arrange everything. Get out my truck, quick. Didn't I tell you he would do what was best for me and the boy? There will be trouble. Oh, you're a calamity. You talk too much. Go. Oh. Hello, Nanny. Hello, darling. Hello, Nanny. Hello, darling. How are you feeling today, Nanny? to me tell madam it would be a great misfortune if she didn't see me before she left London. Misfortune? Show Mrs. Hawford in, Anna. Mrs. Hawford, madam. Sorry you gave yourself the trouble of coming here. There's nothing more to be said. Oh, yes, there is. This matter must be settled satisfactorily. For you? For both of us. Perhaps. When men have an affair to settle, they come together man to man. Now I've left my pride at home. And I come to you without prejudice talk to you as woman to woman. This morning you asked me to take your child into his father's home. And you refused. And now I agree. And now I refuse. Madame, your husband has decided. It is finished. He is going away with you. Oh, madame, I beg you. Give your husband his freedom. No. You must take the consequences of your action. Oh. You will get used to the snobs of decent society when they find out about you and the never-ending moves from place to place. What do I care for society? Do you think I care for anything in this world but my son and the man I love? 
You are planning to bring us all unhappiness. My husband, your child, me, and you too. Do you realize what this would mean to him? Do you realize what his position would be among his business friends in the outside world? Do you know what the final result would be? He began to hate you. You, the cause of it all. But my boy, his future. Do you think you are helping him? In the eyes of the world, he will be your son, not David. What are you going to say to him when he grows older and begins to ask questions? Mommy! Mommy! Yes, dear. Won't you come to me, little boy? His name is David. David? Won't you come to me, David? Are you cross with her? No, darling, no. Aren't you? No, Daisy. My father is buying me a big Eiffel Tower, as high as this. You are a lucky boy. Now that I've seen him, I understand still less how you can bring yourself to take such a risk with that adorable child. Risk. I'm taking no risk. You must know the terrible name that people will brand him with. They shall not. They could not. Only you and I can prevent that. If I'm willing to do my part, how can you refuse to do yours? Okay, I'll be sure you promise to do this in the first thing in the morning. Then we'll send all my mail onto the Creon, will you? Creon, sir? Yes, sir. Send those in the small bag. Mm -hmm. Well, here's some more things, yeah. And look out. I'll let him know. I'll get in touch with him in the next couple of days and tell him. Have John come up and take this down to the car. We sound your horn, Wilson. Why aren't you ready? You should miss the train. I'm not going. Why, what's wrong? What, what happened? Your wife has been here. She's promised to take care of David. She asked you to bring him to her. What are you saying? What are you talking about? You, you can't mean this. Life gives us only one. I'll have my dreams. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mommy, I have my dog. Are we going away? Yes, dear. You're going away with Daddy. Mommy, I'm sleepy. Oh. You'll soon be in bed now, my angel. That's a sweet and darling. Mama Davy. I, I can't think. I know what this means to you. She's very sleepy, my little girl.
put this in the car for me. She loves him. Everybody loves him. Lola. Lola. No. Get some blankets and make a bed for him. Take the back seat. His father won't mind. David. Be very careful that he doesn't fall off the seat. Ask the chauffeur to drive slowly. You must take great care. I can't go. We must find another way, a, a better way. There is no other way for me. Darling, don't you understand? It's you I want. I love you. You're the only thing in the world for me. I, I can't live without you. Forget everything else. I could never forget what your wife said. Woman to woman, we pledged our word so that our boy could hold his head up like any man. Your wife is keeping her word, David. You asked me to break mine. No. You want to do a great thing for me? Anything. Then don't say any more. Just good luck. Take him quick.
my dear, you must not do it. If you won't listen to me, I'll go and tell you. No. You stay here and wait for me. I'm a wealthy man. Isn't there anything I can do? You can't buy her a new heart. Is there something wrong with Lola? She did you a house to dance for the charity. You must stop her. I could not. Quickly, Mr. Halford. She must not do this.
did you do it?